Hey everybody, this is Bruce with the Bowski Studio and today I'm going to do some uh, kayaking here at Mesolonsky Lake behind me. And I've got my whole rig set up here. And this morning I actually made a little uh, go light kit for the kayak, a little different version for 6x8 to try to minimize uh, load out on the uh, kayak. But for today I'm going to see about uh, dragging my stuff along and the plan is to go along a short line, find a place to get out get a viewpoint from the water that you can't get from uh, my little swimming hole here that you see, the beach, and uh, try to film as we go along. It's a nice beautiful day. I'm thinking of trying some more cloud studies as you can see in the sky. Very beautiful today. So uh, let me get in the water. Okay, I'm in the water as you can see and uh, got my gear stowed underneath. Check it out. Then, of course, with the backpack on the back here. And we're going to get to some paddling. It's going to be a little windy, so we won't be able to talk much here, but it's probably breaking up a tad. But I'm going to show you some sky shots that I plan on painting. Hold on. So here's what we're looking at for clouds today. Very cool patterns and such. And uh, we'll see if we can get some done, and maybe even something of some camps along the shore. Here's the view a little bit from my launch point, which is over there. And I've actually been interested in that boathouse. I've seen it at different times of day and uh, I'm paddling around this little point to check out the view from over there. So let's get to These might be interesting to paint from shore. Pretty cool. See if I can get a vantage point. Looks pretty, uh, pretty thick along the shore, so I don't know if I can get out this is why I want to develop that uh, go light kit for the kayak. I'm, I can paint right from the kayak if I anchor myself. Right over there is where I plan the stand. Kind of mucky, so I might set up in the uh, edge of the water right here. Check it out, find out. Yeah, I was surprised actually how uh, comfortable it was to uh, work in this position. Kept my feet cool, and with the breeze, it's pretty fantastic. Uh, very easy to do. I was sort of worried about sinking down, but it did great. So uh, let's continue on with the adventure. Okay, here we go. I'm going to try to talk while I paint, but as uh, you saw in the footage before. It's a little breezy out here, so I'm sure it's going to break up. I'll probably be doing voiceover parts. Raw umber block in as usual. And uh, tripod's a little sinking just a tad. No big deal. I can work with that. I'm going to go for a low um, water line here. Just got a couple of brushes here that I'll be using to start. Tweak as I go along. Try not to get too dark of a, what do you call it, lines and such, where I want the boathouse to end, because that's the subject, and move it over, Okay, let's get some stuff going on here. There's a little dock here with some chairs. And there's a few things, of course, I'll be changing a little bit. Also, there's a tree kind of on the front side of this house here. Just block in a tone of 
and then we have some shadows and what's going to be nice is when I put those chairs in those little pops of color they'll have a backdrop of a dark tone to stand off a bit so so far this is working out pretty darn good I highly recommend everybody try this method of uh, going out in your kayak or a canoe or something and go and go paint like this I am going to be doing a video uh, within a month or month and a half of uh, how I paint from the kayak and mod modifications of the kayak and all that so that'll be pretty interesting to show you guys in case you want to try it so definitely fun to do now let me suggest that house back there and even if it's not an exact copy of that house I like the idea that there's a house back there and maybe the people come out and come to their boat house you know create your own story so let's say right here the front is pretty much in shadow because of the angle of light and with the breeze here and stuff I'm hoping that uh, raw umber will tack up quickly I'm expecting it to now, if you're going to t tackle a subject this complicated, you know, you don't have to put in every every building that you see back there. I'm, I'm changing a few things. I'm, I'm pretty true to what I'm looking at, but if something doesn't make sense or it looks awkward in real life or perspective or something like that, I just leave it out. I don't want to clutter up the scene too much. We have to edit as artists, and that's the important thing is to not get carried away. And using a tube green, I think for the first time, and I, I don't know when, uh, to facilitate getting some uh, uh, bright greens and uh, mix with the other colors so I don't always do that but sometimes I'll experiment with different uh, limited palettes to see what I can achieve so I always recommend you uh, do that once in a while frequently to learn what your colors can do I mentioned that in almost quite a few videos so good practice start massing in some uh, trees. I'm going to use some raw umber. Raw umber, the sap green, and stealing some of my string here. Just knock in some ideas for some light tones, a little more chroma in there. Not going crazy. There's a little coming over as the light dances across this tree. And I'm going to start knocking in a few boat shadow here, boathouse shadow. Going to keep a little ultramarine blue. And we'll sta uh, get in a little alizarin. And I'm not using any medium except for turpentine, uh, Gamsol. Thinner, basically, as I need it. Just trying to get some quick tones in for the suggestion of lights and darks. Don't worry about tree trunks and trees back there. Paint over them because you'll put them in over the wet paint. Getting some more... Ultramarine blue, cad yellow light, stealing some of the mud from the darkness of the boathouse. Kind of trying to create a dapp dappled cutting around some of those highlights I made before. I'll resuggest those later. All this Just is getting a feel. pretty much in shadow. Getting up some quantity of paint. Ultramarine blue, a little bit of sap green, a little uh, raw umber. And 
once I get this suggestion. And I'm going to go for a little bit. When you're painting in bright sunlight, you want to watch your darks, not get them too dark. So I'm going to lighten that up with a little bit of the highlight of the grass there. Just This is just a quick... And I can finesse more paint layers once I get some proper tones in there. So, uh, looking pretty good. Get some base tones of uh, some water in there. Again, switching brushes, just putting down what I was using. Minimizing cleaning. Here's a round bristle. Gonna knock in some quick ultramarine blue. Stealing just a little bit of that greenish color, gray it down a bit. And let's see what we get. I'm not just covering it in, I'm kind of impressionistically putting lines that I can integrate other colors of paint as I progress. And the paint is not super thick. I can commit to that later in case I need to make changes. It'll be easier. Uh, mixing up some pure ultramarine blue, a little bit of white. So you can see how that changes from your grayish green there. Let's see how that goes in between. like to suggest maybe highlights. It's going to be subtle. Really not too much a difference. And then I can take some pure white with mixing into a little bit of that green and then into the blue. Just want to suggest Some interesting as the water water. progresses. Some purples in there too, so I'll get some uh, alizarin going on. So, let's see if, how, how I can zoom in here. The angle of light's kind of nice for showing paint layers, so I'm gonna touch up some uh, dark blue, uh, ultramarine blue, the dark green a little bit for that slight reflection of the building and the tree behind it. Not going too much. Mix a little more. A little sap green, a little ultramarine blue. Maybe get one or two strokes. Leave it. Get a little bit of going on over here too. out my Robert Simmons uh, sapphire brushes, flats. Gonna work on the boat building. Basically a gray. Little mix the water color there with the blue. There's some slight warmth to it, so I'll add a little umber. Thin it a bit. Now this is where we'll start to uh, lay in some colors here like I am in we can clean up, make some nicer shapes, and s sort of start defining what's going on. And with the water, you know, uh, when you're deciding if you want to paint like along a lake frequently and such, the weather just changes so frequently. And once the wind starts picking up and the ripples in the water, uh, sometimes just be aware, you're not always gonna see perfect reflections, so don't just put them in there. Let, let's say you have like, uh, you, sh you can tell that things in your painting, trees or whatever, seem to have a breeze blowing through them, but yet your water is super still. I think that would be highly improbable, uh, improbable of that happening. So just watch what's going on and suggest the water, especially uh, while it plays a part. It's not like you don't want to get overly caught up in trying to capture every little nuance of the water. Find some generic characteristics and uh, use that. Now, if you were doing just a water painting, then yes, you'd have to uh, study quite a bit more to see what's going on, wind direction, all that technical stuff. But right now I'm just kind of getting some broad shapes in for some shadow patterns and trees and such. And that's also one thing to watch when you're painting trees, highlights on trees. Pay attention to the color of the leaves. You know, sometimes the uh, value contrast between the high highlighted side of the tree because they're kind of dark leaves and the shadow side is very small. You may have to uh, fib a little bit to show some difference enough to make it interesting in the painting. So yes, definitely stuff to be uh, wary of. 
Now I'm just kind of working on that background building that's going to be a nice kind of structural element within the organic shapes and having some uh, balance to the angles in the boathouse. Now I'm going to work on the side of the structure and I never use pure white. I've always got a little bit of yellow or some dirty gray mixed in there to especially depending on if it's an aged building sort of thing but just be, you know you want to add some interest that way and it will allow you to carry color harmony throughout the painting uh, from bits of color from other parts something to think about for that okay let me go ahead and get some of that shadow just a little ultramarine blue mixing up just some mud basically a little more ultramarine blue pulling in some of that brown see what we get reserving the trim work okay I'm liking that and of course there's a little detail in the darkness of the shadows of the boathouse I'm going to reestablish some of that dark ultramarine blue Ultramarine blue, raw umber, a little bit of blizzard. Let's uh, make that a little more. This is where we start defining the structure more. Don't worry about just blocking in a shape because you're going to put the nice details over the wet paint you'll see with uh, a loaded brush. And we'll get the shadow of this little dock. Don't worry about mixing a bit with the edge of the water. We want that. And I'm not looking for an exact uh, rendition here, but I am going to cut the dock down a little bit with that highlight of... darkness of shadow of the right here just shaping I want to apologize for some of the real-time commentary having a lot of wind noise but boy was it windy and, and again I apologize for that but try to do the best I can in certain parts to uh, talk about uh, important elements in the painting to discuss for your uh, trying it out in your own work sort of thing so that's why we're having a mix of uh, of course the voiceover and live commentary and I um, think I might look into one of those muffs for the camera I don't know we'll see You're really just creating the essence of what's going on. I'm going to now get the shadow of the other house, which is closest to the shore there. Just mixing up, stealing some of this mud. And this is what kind of harmonizes all your using a limited palette and then just having some of these colors in all the colors. Now I'm going to just Do the shadow of this house. And I'm trying to vary the shadow colors to make it more interesting. I like the reflecting colors around differently. And I'm really trying to not make things too dark because I'm in sun. I'm really trying to push the airiness of these shadows. Maybe there's a little more pure ultramarine shadow. Slightly integrates into the values around so 
adds interest. And I'm just stealing some of the mud because when it goes over this dark paint, it's going to be, should be proper value. I can establish more or less as I like. Usually I use my mall stick for this, but I'm trying to film me doing it to get a little more energy to it, but I'll probably clean it up. Okay, and then the boat's back there. The little back end of the boat is there. And we can intensify, pulling some more chromatic. And as, as it comes out into light, maybe it's lighter right there. Little hint of a maybe blue kayak, it looks like, over there. Let's uh, really try to get some ultramarine blue charged up here. And like it's leaning in there on a Don't noodle around too much. I'm just working on the houses here, and you can see that as I paint down, and of course it's in wet paint, I make a stroke, flip the brush, and, and with the dark paints on the back side, do the other element, and then reload. And as you can see, it's all kind of uneven and stuff. Then what I do, so I just take some of the mud from the shadow color and cut across to clean up like I did in the others. So let me get back to that. And there we go. And as you, it looks messy up there, but when you look at the, the whole totality of the painting, then it all starts to make sense. And we're getting there. We're getting there. Just putting a few more chromatically intense highlights here and there, and put the windows in because I need steadying my hands. So just trying to share different aspects with you. Now I'm going to put some tree trunks in on the birch over here. And there's a birch here and then some other tree. Okay, here's what I got going on. And uh, just added some trunks, suggestion of trunks. And of course I worked on that house, like I said before. I added a chimney, which I thought is a cool structural compositional element. And now I'm gonna work on some windows on this place. Now, in this case, the windows do kind of, are gonna be the ones I use, but feel free to make up your own windows as long as they're in scale. Oh, and I added a little deck right there, but the window darkness is going to be great to define these birches against light on light. So a good technique to use. Let me uh, get to that and I'll fill you in. Okay, I'm going to work on the water a little bit more. I've got everything else pretty much enough information that I can uh, finesse it when I get home. It's looking a little bit of a hot mess, but it's got the bones there. So I'm not going to get too crazy with it and work on a little more of the water. You just can't, uh, you know, beat yourself up too much if uh, everything doesn't go as planned, especially in conditions you might be painting or what you're trying to paint. Uh, you know, I still feel like if I'm trying to push myself and, and paint something I may not be super familiar with, uh, you know, it's not going to turn out perfect because you don't know every step of the way, and that's the whole point of the journey of being an artist. So do not lose that uh, curiosity about tackling subjects you may not be comfortable with. Now I'm just kind of uh, knocking in a little bit of the uh, reflection and water of the uh, sunlight bouncing outside the building. Be careful not to make your uh, reflection highlights as bright as of course your your source that's casting the the highlight onto the water and reflection. And just touching up a little bit of the water, add a little bit of interest here and there. That'll need some more work for sure but you know, the wind was whipping up pretty good, so it wasn't flat and calm. Okay, I'm calling it quits here. I've done some uh, detail work, as you can see, on the dock with the boats, the boat house. It will need some uh, touch-ups in the studio once the paint dries. i got too much wet paint on there right now. Water's kind of interesting. Uh, I'll have to uh, adjust that just a bit and clean it up, but uh, overall, I like it. 
Okay, the uh, setup worked out really good. Even though I'm in the water, it did not sink at all. And uh, really happy with how it performed. And I got the little rack that I, I strap everything to with bungee cords. Laid my brushes out and pulled the kayak up and it worked out per pretty well. Okay, everybody, I want to thank you for joining me for this little kayaking adventure. I think I got a nice piece started and uh, really enjoyed myself. Super nice out here. I think it's about right now 75. Nice breeze. I think I'm going to do a cloud painting next. And I want to thank you for joining me. And if you're new to the channel, thank you for watching. And I invite you to subscribe. And be sure to turn on your notifications icon to uh, be alerted as to when I post new videos. For everyone else, uh, thanks for checking it out. And I invite everybody to follow me at Abowski Studio, my uh, art page on Facebook. And check out my website, www.habowskistudio.com. Until the next adventure, bye.